of stimulation, uh, predictive of success in IVF cycles. Uh, colleagues from uh, we have to use this Tunisia. One. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, dear colleague, during the following presentation, uh, I will try to answer the following question. Are endometrium thickness and pattern at day six of stimulation predictive of success in IVF cycle? As you know, endometrium receptivity is critical for pregnancy occurring, and during controlled ovarian hyperstimulation monitoring, ultrasound is a non invasive tool for endometrium investigation. Many authors use this tool to evaluate the impact of endometrium thickness and aspect on IVF outcome. But most of these authors focused on ACG day, and we aimed in our study to evaluate the impact of uh, endometrium future thickness and pattern on the sixth day of stimulation on pregnancy rate in IVF. So we have designed a prospective study in our RT center, and we include patients under 42 years undergoing IVF cycle and having at least one embryo to transfer. We exclude patients with uh, intrauterine pathologies. During controlled ovarian hyperstimulation monitoring, we focused on endometrium study on the day six and on ACG day, and we assessed endometrium thickness and pattern, and for this purpose, we have uh, classified endometrium on uh, three types. Type A was uh, homogeneous, hyperechogenic one, and type C was three-layered one, and type B was mixed. We have enrolled uh, on the first step 86 uh, patients, and uh, when we evaluated the clinical pregnancy rate according to endometrium pattern, we failed to show any statistical significant difference, both on the sixth day and on ACG day. And uh, we also evaluated the clinical pregnancy, clinical pregnancy rate according to endometrium thickness, and uh, for this we have chosen the threshold of uh, 7 mm for uh, the sixth day of stimulation and the threshold of 9 mm for ACG day. And again, we showed no statistical significant difference. So we have concluded that this primary result failed to demonstrate any predictive value of endometrium thickness or pattern on the sixth day of stimulation as well as on ACG day. And that was because, probably because of the small number of patients. So we continue our study and we had 188 patients we have reevaluated the impact of endometrium pattern on the sixth day of stimulation. And as you see in this chart, patient parameter and uh, IVF parameter were comparable between uh, three subgroups, except for the mean number of uh, top embryo quality, which was lower on the group C. And there was no statistical significant difference on clinical pregnancy rate and implantation rate according to endometrium pattern on the sixth day of stimulation. We uh, did the same for uh, the endometrium pattern on ACG day, and as you see, there, there was no significant difference uh, between uh, three subgroups according to endometrium pattern on ACG day. And again, we showed no statistical significant difference for clinical pregnancy rate and implantation rate regarding endometrium pattern on ACG day. We also looked for the impact of endometrium pattern evolution from the sixth day of stimulation to ACG day and its impact on clinical pregnancy rate. But uh, we also found no statistical significant difference, but subgroups, but patient number in different subgroups were too small to can draw any conclusion. So endometrium pattern assessed on the sixth day of stimulation was not related to clinical pregnancy rate and implantation rate, but we have to note that we had less top quality embryo in, in uh, the group C. Endometrium pattern on ACG day was not related to clinical pregnancy rate and implantation rate, as well as endometrium pattern evolution direct control to ovarian hyperstimulation. We also uh, looked at uh, the, endometrium, uh, the impact of endometrium thickness on pregnancy occurring, and we confirmed that endometrium thickness on the sixth day of stimulation was not related to, clean, uh, to pregnancy occurring. In this contrasts with endometrium thickness on ACG day, which was a significant parameter for pregnancy occurring. And to study this parameter, we have divided our population in three subgroups, according to threshold of 8 and 13 mm. In this chart, you see that the best clinical pregnancy rate have been uh, uh, achieved in the group of patients having an endometrium thickness on ACG day between 8 and 13 mm. Uh, amplitude rate was also higher in these uh, subgroups, but this was not significant. 
but when we compared uh, patient and IVF parameter for these uh, three subgroups, we have uh, found that they were comparable for all parameters except for on the endometrium thickness on the sixth day of stimulation, which was lower in the group of patients having an endometrium thickness on ACG day equal or less than 8 mm. And that means that patients who will have a thin endometrium on the sixth day of stimulation will probably have a thin endometrium on ACG day. And we, found, we looked for a correlation between these two parameters and we found that there is a linear correlation between the endometrium thickness on the sixth day of stimulation and, and on ACG day. This was significant, but it was a weak correlation. So endometrium thickness on the sixth day of stimulation was not directly related to clinical pregnancy rate and implantation rate. And endometrium thickness on ACG day between 8 and 30 mm was in our study associated with higher clinical pregnancy rate. Endometrium thickness on ACG day depends on, in part on endometrium thickness on the sixth day of stimulation. There is conflicting data about the relation about, uh, between endometrium pattern on ACG day and IVF outcome. Some authors have reported poor outcome with the homogeneous hyperechogenic pattern, the type A in our study, and others reported no relation between IVF outcome and endometrium pattern. There is also, also conflicting data about uh, the, uh, the uh, predictive value of an endometrium pattern, uh, of endometrium pattern during control of ovarian hyperstimulation. And Basile showed no significant difference in, in endometrium pattern during control of ovarian hyperstimulation between conception and non-conception group. And this contrasts with Cook who showed that the time of appearance of the endometrium triple layer was statistically significant for pregnancy occurring, but this was only for antagonist group. Several uh, authors have studied the uh, impact of endometrium thickness on ACG day, and most of them have reported a significant impact. Most of them and, uh, reported that both a thin or too thick endometrium is associated with poor outcome in IVF. And finally, there, there are few data about the impact of endometrium thickness, evolution, direct control, ovarian hyperstimulation, and uh, its correlation with uh, IVF outcome. And the most of them report no cor correlation between the endometrium growth dynamics during control of ovarian hyperstimulation and the success in IVF. In conclusion, uh, endometrium pattern on the sixth day of stimulation was not related to, to IVF outcome in our study. And endometrium thickness on the sixth day of stimulation was not directly related to clinical pregnancy rate but endometrium thickness assessed on ACG day, which was a predictive independent factor of success. Now, a study is partly dependent on endometrium thickness on the sixth day of stimulation. Thank you for your attention.